All right, so we've got a lot of things functioning in our app properly. I can create a budget category and then I can add an amount. And if I hit enter or hit click create budget, you see it submits it there. We get this nice pending state. It refocuses this, clears out the form and gives us a notification. Now you might remember that in the dashboard itself, what we've got is this showing if we do have a user and this intro showing if we don't. So just to show you what that looks like, I can come over here and click delete user. This is the intro that's showing right here. As soon as I add in my name like this, it should now create an account and welcome me. Okay, so now we've got this set up and ready. What I want to do next is add a form here where we can submit expenses. So if I jump over to the finished app, this is not something I've been showing you a whole lot, but if I come over here to groceries and whatever, I add 1200, now you'll see that now I get this option to add different elements. Now there's a couple things we want to pay attention to. Eventually we're going to get down to all this, but you can see here I can add an expense, but it's scoped to the groceries because that's the only budget I currently have. And I'll add this as like 120 or something. If I were to create another budget though, so like budget two or whatever for 1200, now you can see I get this drop down where I get to choose between groceries or budget two. So we wanna set it up like that to where this is optional and it will show basically if we have more than one budget, otherwise it will just scope it to the budget that currently exists. All right, so that's what we're gonna work on next is this form. But to do that, we need to kind of restructure how some of this works. And a lot of that is gonna be using this. Now, rather than trying to put all of this inside of here, I think the easier thing to do would just be delete this and then re kind of set it up like this. So let me go ahead and surround this with these curly brackets and we can have an optional little section depending on what we decide here. So right here, I wanna check on a couple things. First of all, that budgets exists and that I have budgets dot uh, length and that that would be greater than zero. So in other words, it can't be an empty array. So if both of those things are true, then I want to add all of this stuff right here. Otherwise, down below, we're gonna do something very similar to what we've got up this way. So let me actually go ahead and give this a little bit more space just so it's a little bit easier to read. Then down here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna add almost what we currently have, but I'm gonna change it just slightly by putting everything inside of a grid small container. And then I'm gonna add two paragraphs of text. The first one saying personal budgeting is the secret to financial freedom. And then right below it here, we'll have create a budget to get started. And then lastly, I just wanna go ahead and copy this down and we're gonna add it down this way. So if I don't have anything, let me move back to our current code and I've deleted all of the uh, application data over here. So right here, I deleted all those budgets. So this should be showing right here and you can see that personal budgeting is the secret to financial freedom. Create a budget to get started, perfect. So once I create a budget, it should remove that text. So groceries and I don't know, something. And you can see now, hopefully, there we go, it disappears. Okay, so now we're in this section. Now I do actually wanna change this up a little bit as well. So we are gonna have stuff in a grid large container here, but what I wanna add down here is another form. So assuming that I have a budget, then I can go ahead and show the expense form. So add expense form is what I want. And I actually wanna pass down my budgets to it. That way I can decide in that component how many budgets to show based on how many budgets I've saved. So that's where we'd get that little drop down. So I'm gonna just pass it down as a prop of budgets, just like this. Now we haven't created this yet and we could pretty much copy most of the stuff from add budget form, but I think it actually might help just both with practice and hopefully with clarity to go ahead and build it once again from scratch. So if I say this, we're gonna have a problem because this is not defined. You can see our custom error message is showing there as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but let me come over here, open up the sidebar. We'll come right inside here and add another component. This is gonna be called add expense form. So I'll template this out and then we've got that there. Let me now come over here and just make sure I pull this in up top. So we'll copy this down, grab both these and say add expense form. All right, so there it is, add expense form showing up for us. Uh, now let's actually style that. So let's open this back up. And once again, we wanna do several things that we've done before in the past with this, just like we did with our add budget form. To start with, I wanna add a class here. It's the same class we used on the other one and that is class of form wrapper and our CSS should style that now with that nice dotted line. Then I have an H2 here with a class of H3 like we did before. This will say add new. And then here's where we're gonna have a difference depending on whether or not we have one budget or multiple budgets. So here we'll have a span with a class of accent. We're gonna ask this question, does budgets dot length equal one? And only in that case, then I wanna render out budgets dot map. We'll call this budge and we'll just render out the budge.name. 
If I were to save this, it's going to give us problems because we have not yet accepted the prop in here. So we need to accept budgets. And you might remember that we passed that in, let's see, down this way. So right here, this is what we're accepting now right here. And then we're running this little ternary off of this. Well, having this logical and that basically will show this text if we have a budget length of one. So here you see add new groceries. And then at the end of this, let's see, inside the H2 but outside the span, I want this to say expense. And then just to make sure these spaces work properly, let's add them like this. And I'll do the same thing right here. All right, perfect. Hopefully that's clear as mud. All right, now below the H2 is where we're going to add our form. Now you might remember we're actually going to use the same kind of fetcher function we did before. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in up here, const fetcher equals use fetcher. All right, again, that should import up top here with React Router DOM. And now I can grab this right here and say fetcher.form and fetcher.form. Okay, perfect. Now, just like a normal form, we're going to add a method on here. And we'll go a little bit faster since we've done this before. But I'll add a method of post. And then I want to add some classes as well. And these should look familiar. So I'll add a class name here of grid small. And then I do want to add a ref to this as well. And this will be our uh, form ref. Now we need to actually declare these up here. So let's go ahead and say const form ref equals use ref. And this should come from React. And let me just go ahead and grab this up here. We'll call this React Router DOM imports. And this will be React imports. All right, so now we've connected this ref right here to this use ref hook. Now inside here, I'm going to actually add everything inside of a div with a class of expense inputs. And this is, again, just for styling purposes. This will set the names side by side. This will set the name and the amount of the expense side by side uh, when it's appropriate on the screen. Now, just like before, each of these are going to be inside of a grid extra small just to keep the labels and the inputs next to each other. This one will be called new expense. And we'll just simply say expense name. And then we need to go ahead and add an input here. This will be a type of text, but let me go ahead and move this down this way like that. And then we'll give this our name of new expense. And we'll also set that as the ID as well. Now for the placeholder, we're going to set this as eg coffee, just to give an example. And then for the ref, we want to point this to, uh, we'll call this focus ref, like we did before. So let's come back up top here and let's go ahead and declare that. So I'll call this focus ref and then come back down here. All right, after the focus ref, we wanna make sure that this is required and then we're gonna do it again. So let's come down here and we'll add another grid uh, extra small and this will have a label as well. This label will be new expense amount and we'll simply call this amount for the actual visible label. Then below here, we'll have an input. This will be a type of number and just like before, we want to go ahead and set a step so that the step increment will be by 0.01. And then input mode will be also set to decimal like before. Again, this makes it to where on mobile devices, you actually get uh, a decimal or like the number pad with a period or decimal. I'm not sure where that's doing up there. So let's get rid of that and come down below here. We'll set the name here to the same thing. So new expense amount, copy that down and then the ID so that the label and the input are pointing to each other. The placeholder here we'll simply set as like 3.50 to give an example, and then we'll set required. So they do have to provide an actual amount. Now we want to come down here and inside the form, but below these divs here, we want to go ahead and add that optional section that may or may not display. If we only have one budget, it should not display. If we have more than one budget, it should display. For now, let's just set this to grid of extra small. Just like before, this will have a label. We'll call this new expense budget. And we'll name this budget category. Below here, we're going to use the select option and set this name to the same thing. So new expense budget and the same thing for the ID, new expense and budget. Now, once again, this needs to be required. So they have to choose one of these categories and it should auto select the very first one. So inside here, assuming that we've got budgets, which again, it should never be visible because of the way we set up our dashboard unless we've got budgets. So we don't need to actually do a check here. We can just say budgets dot sort because I actually do want to sort these and I want to sort them by when they were created. Now you might remember that each of these budgets is going to have a created at property on them. So we'll say a dot created at minus b dot created at. So they should now be properly sorted. Let me actually move these down here and we haven't yet outputted these. So it's yelling at us, but that's okay. We're going to say now we want to map over these. We will call them budgets because that's what they are. 
and we simply want to return some JSX. So this will be an option element here, and the value is going to be the budget's ID. So budget.id. And because we are creating a map here, we also need to have a key for React, and we'll do the same thing. So we'll say uh, budget.id. Now the actual display value will be the budget name. So budget.name. So I'll walk you through that again in a second, but just note that what we've done is take our budgets that we passed in up top, let's see, right here, and we're looping over each of those and sorting them by when they were created. So the, the last one created should be first, uh, et cetera, all the way down the list. Then you'll notice here that we're mapping through the budgets, and for each budget, we're returning this bit of JSX. We're going to give it a value right here so that when we select this and submit our form, this is the budget ID it's connected to, and then the budget name will be what's displaying right here. So if I drop this down, you should see there's only one, and you might remember that we don't want to show this if there's only one. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to come up top here to this whole div right here, and we're going to say that it needs to be hidden if the budget's dot length is equal to one. So now that we know it's working, I'll click save and it should hide itself and that's what it does. So if I were to add another budget, for instance, I came in here and added whatever that is and hit create, now it should show and that's what it does. And that little span we had disappears. All right, now this is all fine and well, but we don't yet have a button to click. So let's come down below here, uh, right inside this fetcher form close. And we want to do two things. First of all, we need to add another hidden input. So hidden, you might remember that we are using these that have a name of underscore action. And that will tell us what we should do with the form when it's submitted. Here we want the value to be create expense. And then below here, we're going to have a button. And this one will be so similar, again, to that add budget form. that Let's just go ahead and copy that so we don't have to redo all this because I think at this point, we're pretty clear with where we're at on the form. So I'm going to copy this out, come over here, and we'll paste this in right here. Now we've got a couple things we've got to change because if I were to save this, we'd get an error because we have yet to actually determine what is submitting and what's not submitting from the fetcher. So that's one thing we need to change. I also want to change what this says. So this needs to say add expense. And then I also want to change the, this currency dollar icon. So I want this instead to be a plus circle icon. And you can see it's actually pulling in there. So I'll go ahead and do that. Come up top here and let's go ahead and move this up. I'll move this down. We'll call this library imports. And while we're up here, let's go ahead and set my const is submitting to fetcher dot state if that equals submitting. So now if I save it, everything should work and it does. Okay, cool. So I've got this right here. We have yet to handle that form, but there's one more thing we need to do because this is submitting. We want to actually set some stuff based on that. And you might remember, that right here, that's one of those things. We want to set this to say submitting. All right, so let me come back up top here and let's go ahead and use our use effect hook. So use effect and our dependency array here will simply take in is submitting. And just like with our add budget form, we're going to check if it's done submitting. So if it's not submitting, then I want to do two things. Number one, I want to clear the form. And number two, I want to refocus the selection on the name of the expense. So clear form and then reset focus. So we'll go formref.current.reset. And then next I want to focus on the focus ref, so current.focus. All right, uh, submitting is not defined. You're right, <laughs> this should be uh, is submitting. Okay, so there we go. So I should be able to come in here, add something, add an amount, and then select a budget category. My first one I created should be first, all the rest should be below, and then it should submit. Now, it's obviously got a problem right now because we didn't do anything, but we can go back and return to this page. So let's actually handle this now over in the dashboard. So we've submitted this form, and you might remember once again that we've added a hidden type right here with the action of create expense. So we can handle that over here in our action. So I'll come up top here and create another option in addition to this one. If action this time equals create expense, then instead of creating a budget, I want to create an expense and then add some kind of toast message to say congratulations. Otherwise, we'll say there was a problem creating your expense. All right, so first of all, just to make sure this is working properly, let's change this around. We'll say expense. And then in this case, we actually want this to be inside template strings, and this will be values dot new expense, which was the name of the expense. We'll say that's been created. So even though it's not gonna actually create it right now, we're gonna get a, a success message because of the way we set this up. I don't have anything I'm getting back from local storage here, so I'm just gonna assume that everything is working properly. Again, obviously you'd probably be submitting this to 
a database, but you can see there is expense coffee created. Okay, so we're set to go there. Now we just have to create a little helper function to actually create an expense. So let's get rid of this and we'll eventually pull it in. But for right now, I want to open up my helpers.js and let's see, we've created a budget. We're gonna do a lot of similar stuff. So let's just copy this down and then we'll create an expense. So right here, create expense and expense. That should work. Now, the first thing I wanna do is we do have this ID, that's right. We do have this name, also correct. Created amount, that's fine. Amount, we don't need a color, but I do need something else. So I need the budget ID. We're gonna get that from budget ID that we pass in. And again, I don't have to pass those both in, but just to show you that this is what we're gonna be getting in up here, we're gonna pull in a budget, oops, budget ID. All right, just like that. Now we do wanna look at existing uh, expenses, not budget. So let me grab this and I'll hit Command D on all those and change this to expenses. And so we should fetch the data for expenses. If they don't exist, if this is null or undefined, I will get back an empty array. And then what I'll do is I'll set the item expenses to whatever my existing ones are. So this should be expenses here as well. And then we'll also pass in this new item. So now all I have to do is actually use this. So let's come over to the dashboard once again. And right here where we're trying something, let's go ahead and try to create this expense. You'll see I'm getting an import statement there just to make sure it came in properly. Let's go check on that. There it is, create expense. Okay, perfect. Now you'll see here I've got a name, an amount, a budget ID. So this is all gonna be inside of an object so I don't have to remember what order to pass them in. I just have to name them. So the name here will be the name of our field for new expense. So values.new expense is what we called that. And then next we've got an amount. So this will be amount. This will be values.new expense amount. Even though we're passing it in as a string, you might remember that we're actually converting it here to a number with this little plus sign. All right, finally then, we actually need to pass in the budget ID. Now, where would we get that from? You might remember that each of those select options had an actual option that had a value, which was the ID of the budget. And that's where we're getting this from. So values.newexpense budget. All right, so let me walk you through this one more time, assuming that it works. So should we test it out first? Probably. So let's come over here and I'll add a coffee like this, 1.2, whatever, groceries, that works. Before I hit submit, let me open this up and let's look at the application right here. So we don't have any expenses yet. Now, if I click this, it should add them. There we go. All right, cool. We had a little delay there because of our fake uh, data loading kind of function. So there's our amount. There's our budget ID that it's connected to when it was created, the ID, and then the name. All right, cool. So it's actually working. Let's now talk through it once again. So when this is displaying, if I come over this way, we've got several fields that people can fill in. They've got to fill them in, in fact. The first is the name, so they've got to give it in a name. They've also got to give it an amount. So that's these two right here. Then we've got a budget category down below. So this budget category is going to give us a select with multiple options. For each option, it's going to have the value set to whatever the budget's ID is so we can capture that when we create the new expense. Now, because I've come down here and I've added this type of hidden with a name of underscore action, and I've set it to create expense, when I submit it to its current form, because you remember our form up here, our fetcher.form, I suppose, it doesn't actually have an action, so it should just submit to the page it's on. In this case, that would be the dashboard. So the dashboard is gonna handle that, and if I come over here, we've checked on what the action is. If it's create expense, then we've tried to create an expense. We've passed in the name, the amount, and the budget ID. Then we've returned a toast message. We've caught any errors that happen to happen. All of this is happening inside of our action. Then it's actually using our little helper function to save this to our local storage, and then giving us a little toast message to say that it has been successful. Now, in the next video, we actually need to display these budgets down below here. We'll eventually display the expenses as well, but I wanna actually see what budgets I have available in little carts. In fact, if I come over here to the finished uh, the finished code you can see here, this is what I want it to look like. So we're gonna create these things next that will show how much we've created and it will actually look and see how many uh, expenses are connected to that budget based on all the data we just gathered. All right, well, I hope you're ready. I will see you there.